another treaty was introduced called the Convention on Biological Diversity. George Bush refused to sign that treaty, but Bill Clinton signed it shortly after he was elected and sent it to the Senate for ratification. It is that convention that I want to talk about first because it is, well, both of them are scary. The Convention on Biological Diversity is 16 pages long, very bland, extremely vague, a list of principles that's as sweet as motherhood and apple pie. It says, for example, in Article 8, that every member nation shall, as far as is appropriate, create a system of protected areas. Now, who in the world can argue with that? Sounds, you know, hey, we've got national parks. We've got 100 million acres of wilderness already set aside. National parks all over everywhere. National monuments that are new in Utah right now. We have actually 12% of the land area of the United States is already protected through the system of, of wildlife refuges and national parks. So how can you fault a treaty that says we're going to create a system of protected areas? We already have it. However, Article 25 says that there shall be created a, conven a conference of the parties and that conference of the parties shall create a subsidiary body that will produce a global biodiversity assessment. Now, the conference of the parties held its first meeting in Nassau last December. At that first meeting, the United Nations Environment Program presented them with a global biodiversity assessment. <laughs> Started in 1992 with a grant from the Global Environment Facility for $3.3 million, orchestrated and coordinated by the World Resources Institute and the World Wildlife Fund and the International Union for the Conservation of Nature. This is 1140 pages that explains how to implement the 16-page treaty on biodiversity. <laughs> the last 200 pages, section 13, deals specifically with a system of protected areas. It defines what a system of protected areas is. It includes core wilderness areas surrounded by buffer zones similar to those used in the biosphere reserves created under a UNESCO program and promoted by the United States Man in the Biosphere program. There are 382 biosphere reserves around the world, 47 of which are in the United States not under authority of any treaty, but by voluntary agreement with the United Nations. These biosphere reserves are to be the nucleus for the core wilderness areas. Scratching my head here, what on earth is going on? And then I stumbled on page 993, and friends, if you don't think that's some heavy reading at night, <laughs> Page 993, after describing these protected areas, sums it all up by saying, the recently published Wildlands Project in the United States is the central theme of protected areas. Now, what do you know about that? How many of you know about the Wildlands Project? Here it is. It was published in 1992 by an organization called the Cenozoic Society in its newsletter called Wild Earth. Dave Foreman happens to be the chairman of the board of the Cenozoic Society. How many of you know who Dave Foreman is? Dave Foreman is the originator, founder of Earth First. 
Earth First is perhaps the most militant eco-terrorist organization in the world. He left and created the Cenozoic Society. Then he created the Wildlands Project. He recruited a scientist named Dr. Reed F. as in Frank Noss, N-O-S-S, who wrote the Wildlands Project under grants from the Nature Conservancy and the Audubon Society, says so in the book. And on page 15 of the Wildlands Project, Dr. Reed Noss says that we must convert at least 50% of the land area of North America to wilderness off limits to human beings. Those core wilderness areas are to be interconnected by wilderness corridors off limits to human beings. Those wilderness areas are to be surrounded by buffer zones that may have limited resource use under the supervision and permitting of the federal government in collaboration with non-government organizations. Human population is to be resettled into the remaining 25% of the land into communities that are described as sustainable communities.